When I first started riding my bike, I was about seven, I kind of taught myself to ride on two wheels by myself. I did kind of split my eye a little bit on a metal iron gate. Yeah, after that, I cried for a little bit because I was like seven and I kind of got back on my bike. I can't tell you how many times I've had people, both my wife and I, we've had people, well, he's not really blind. He can see something, right? He's our son, and that's all he is. Not the blind one, just our son. It's not really a disability, actually. It kind of is uh, more of a strength than a uh, weakness. Like a superhuman power. He doesn't let that blindness define him. And he's never going to use it as an excuse. He might even be more likely to try something because of his blindness. Or if somebody says he can't do it. When I walk into a gym, I kind of go in the mindset that I'm going to win the match, even if it's most likely that I'm not going to. Because you have to have that mindset that you're going to win or you're actually going to lose. Mikey was just shy of two years old when we brought him home. I didn't know what to do with him. I had no idea. And it was like, OK, do I baby him? Do I not baby him? How do I do this? And we just kind of decided that he needed to be able to do everything. My husband and I adopted Mikey, Letty, and Nevaeh. They're all siblings. These three children were my sister's youngest son's children. He was in trouble, drugs. Wife was the same way. I remember coming home from work, and my wife, Vicky said, I, I got to talk to you, so sit down. And she explained to me that uh, both parents had uh, given up their rights as parents and that they were the state was going to put the babies, the kids, up for adoption. And I'm, well, why don't we just adopt them? It was really hard to uh, see these babies cry because Nobody was showing up to visit. And that was um, really hard on all of them. Ording is a wrestling town, for sure. The junior program is unbelievable. And, you know, I think everybody was kind of a little, what do we do? You know, how do we, how do we teach him? When I first met Mikey, it was actually his uh, mom called me up and asked about the wrestling program and is it okay if a, a blind kid wrestled? You know, and that kind of set you back a little bit. I'd never coached somebody that's blind, but you know, I said, of course, bring them down and we'll do what we can do. And, and then in the back of my mind, I'm going, God, how am I gonna coach a blind kid? The coaches were a little hesitant, but once they saw his, the way he adapted to it and how hard he tried at it, then the coaches really stepped up. Oh, I'm the crazy guy, the yeller and the screamer. And, you know, I think I'm as sore as wrestlers are when I get home from a wrestling tournament because I move around and try to kind of hit moves on my own. Uh, and that's just how I am. I, I probably should try to sit back and fold my arms, but I just can't do it. That's just not me. My favorite coach would be Coach Chef Banky because he's helped me a lot, him and his son. But yeah, he's kind of the one that's helped me the most. I've always tried to make a difference for these kids' life. You know, hopefully if I make, made a difference with one kid, then I've done something right. Mikey wants to be the best that he can be at it. And once he sets his mind to it, that he's going to be the best he can, there's no stopping him. You know, the first year, he you know, he didn't win a whole lot of matches. And you know, he looked pretty stiff and, and stuff like that. But it didn't take him long to get good. The first 
kids would feel sorry for them, you know, or these kids would actually be scared because they never, you know, they never did do anything like that. And then they're on their back getting pinned in 30 seconds and they're not scared no more. Come on, my God! We had an incident where the ref came up to me and he said, excellent job with this young man. It's like, I, I can't believe that he wrestles so well for not, for being handicapped. And Michael was standing right there and he's like, I'm not handicapped. The more you tell him he can't do something, the more he's gonna prove you wrong. We're at a wrestling match and a coach or another parent walks up to me and says, are you Mikey's dad? Yeah. Wow, he's a good wrestler. That's more important than any trophy or ribbon out there. It's just the other people seeing that he is, he's a warrior, a fighter. Mikey's move, everyone knows, is that far side cradle. I mean, he hits that far side cradle, and everybody knows it's coming, and they just got to try to stop it. There's a point where you can see when he starts to wrap his cradle, you can kind of see his hands connect. And that's when you know that they're not getting out of it. And that'll be all she wrote. I can only imagine what it's like to lose to Mikey. Everybody's rooting for him because of his blindness. You know, it's got to hurt them that everybody wants him to win and not his opponent. When he wins a match, he's always very gracious and usually gives the other guy a hug, says, hey, you know, you'll do better next time. We've, we've come so accustomed to winning that we don't remember the losses that much because there hasn't been very many. Mikey wins a lot. It's very seldom that he loses. So every loss, he takes really hard. Really no participation medals in wrestling. You know, they don't raise both hands. One kid gets his hand raised, one kid goes off the mat a loser. And really, that's kind of how life is. So it's just how you take the loss. You usually learn more from a loss than you do from a win. It's pretty special to see a kid overcome what he's coming, to do what he's doing. I know you guys did it. <laughs> Losing motivates me because it gives me more to work on. Losing helps me understand like what I did wrong and what to do I could do better. When I start wrestling, everything kind of just disappears. I'm in my own little world. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I like to wrestle, and I don't care if anybody's there or not. I just want to wrestle, and I want to win, and I'm, yeah. Michael wouldn't be who he is without wrestling, I don't think. It's shaped his personality a lot. It's given him confidence. If I had one wish, it would probably be that I could be a better wrestler, I guess, than I am now. Uh, or I wish I could help kids become better wrestlers than they are. You know, I'd like to say I'd like to see him win the state tournament, but that's not it. I want him to be successful in life. You know, I want him to be happy in life when he gets out of school and there's other things involved. Right now, he's got a pretty big community helping him. But, you know, once you get into that real world, into an adulthood, that community is not always there. So that's what I want to see, is him be successful in life. One day, I want to go to Ohio State because they have one of the best wrestling clubs Maybe go to the Olympics and get gold. Be the first one to get, the first blind kid to get gold in the Olympics. Not the Special Olympics, the Olympics.
77 pounds, Michael Bishop. And Zena Lee. 81 pounds, Adriano Perez. Nine pounds, Alan Segura. And Tavari Lee. 